It was first opened in 1933 and is one of the many international motor racing circuits in England that are now available to all members of the Classic Saloon Car Club. The club was formed in 1975 in an attempt to recreate the golden age of saloon car racing. It's run under the official auspices of the RAC, who govern and organise all motor racing in the United Kingdom. It was conceived firstly as a low-cost formula for the ordinary enthusiast who wanted to race his by now 25-year-old classic saloon car. Motor racing began almost as soon as man invented the first car in the late 19th century. The first motor race was held in 1894 from Paris to Rouen and was won by a French de Dion car at an average speed of just 12 miles an hour. Much faster cars soon appeared and by the early 1900s many now famous makes of cars such as Bugatti, Mercedes and Bentley were being driven in all sorts of races but mainly on closed public roads. Brooklands was the home of British motor racing for many years and it was not long before the 100 mile an hour lap was fairly commonplace. These cars were however extremely expensive and only the very wealthy could afford to run and race them. As a result, car manufacturers had to cater for the ordinary motorist by mass producing low cost family saloons. Once again, Earl's Court houses Britain's annual motor show. And if your pocket won't stretch this far, well, Accent this year is on the family man's car. The Standard 8 is one of the new babies designed for the man with the not-so-hefty back balance. Now for a glimpse of the cheapest of them all, the Ford Popular, a lively tin-horse job that costs £390 all in. Baby Austin, modern version of the pre-war favourite, is another not-so-expensive model. But you have to pay extra for luxuries like this. On to the Morris Minor Travel. These cars did perhaps 55 miles per hour and 40 miles to the gallon. Nowadays, these same cars in the hands of our club members do at least 100 miles an hour, but maybe only 10 miles to the gallon. The club membership is comprised of people from all walks of life. We have office and factory workers, vets, farmers, doctors and housewives. I'm the public relations officer of the club, but during the week I work as the fashion manager for a large chain of stores. It's much easier to, to, uh, to wear, the colours are much smoother, they're all interchangeable and the whole thing is very nice and I think a good illustration is what we see the girls wearing here now. Right girls, let's just have a minute of your time. Now, Ivy, this is what we were talking about in terms of the colour thing. Really nice toning colours, but three completely different colours here, but they're toning and they're lovely. Nice little outfit. Now, here's another example. Of the involvement in the club is terrific. You can get involved without getting broke. I'm a family man with a mortgage and usual overdraft facilities from the bank, God bless him. And I'm delighted to say that I can get by. My car is jointly owned with my boss from work, funnily enough. And he and I run the car together. Monday to Friday, he's my boss. On Saturday, Sunday, I give him a bit of stick and teach him how to run a motor car. I first started with a total lack of uh, any mo mechanical knowledge and the uh, work I did was involved purely and simply in uh, sweeping up and making the cups of tea for the other lads. Uh, it got a bit expensive so of necessity I had to learn and with a great deal of help from uh, my fellow members I, I got to know a lot about my motor car and in fact in the three years I've been a member of the club instead of now um, having to rely on others, nine-tenths of the car that I'm driving at the moment is built with my own hands. The biggest thing about the hobby is that you've got to enjoy the mechanical aspects of it as well as the driving. Some of our members in the club have got enormous facilities and one such person is Malcolm Golden who is an old racing colleague of mine from way back in the old days. He lives in the adjacent village to me and it was through him that I learnt most of the things I now know about my car. He's got the facilities, he's got the knowledge, uh, he's got wide uh, background both in and out of motorsport. 
and it's people like him who are able to help members of the club like myself who've got little or no expertise in gaining the necessary knowledge so that we can get to the start line and, and also be competitive if not actually beat him. That's where our problem is, Mel. Where is it? Oh, there, yes. Yeah. Yes, I see. <coughs> got an oil leak. Yeah, it's going to be one of the two oil seals. Well, either the clutch or the engine. Yeah. Well, either way, we'll have to take the engine out, Eddie. All right. Well, we'll do get on doing that then. OK, right. right. Well, some of the problems we've got here is um, that club members expect to use our facilities all the time for nothing. Now, this, of course, we cannot do as it's a commercial garage and we've got to earn our money, earn our wages, you see. And um, so we've had to institute a programme of teaching local club members how to <coughs> service and maintain their own cars. It's a very, very specialist job with these because the engine modifications are such that uh, different tolerances are employed and um, the engines have to be built to a much greater degree of finesse than normal. One particular member, Tony Kelly, the PRO of the club, when he started racing classics a couple of years ago, knew nothing about the job whatsoever and couldn't even really change a sparking plug. But now he's got to the stage that he can change engines, gearboxes, suspension units and do most of his own work apart from changing things like pistons and crankshafts. Although all the cars in the club look like the original production saloon, they are raced in two distinct groups, road-going and modified. The modified series are allowed freedom of conversion, while the road-going cars are virtually standard. Within each of the two classifications, there are four distinct engine sizes which race against one another. I joined this club, I think, three years ago now. I paid three pounds to be a member and also paid another three pounds to be a racing member. It's a very, very cheap way of getting into motor racing. For instance, the first car I purchased to join the club was a Morris Minor. I paid 30 pounds for it. We purchased it in the street. We put some uh, improved wheels on it and various bits and pieces. And we entered our first race meeting and that was it. And I think our overall cost, I think, for the first meeting was probably about 500 pounds for the first car we ever had. Well, you've got a buy the car, uh, this one cost me £120 and uh, that's a fairly realistic buying cost but you've then got to put it into a good condition and you can spend £200 easily um, items like new batteries, all new steering joints, the tyres, this sort of thing. We spent uh, something like £600 last year but uh, that was almost a complete engine build. Um, a yeah, lot of the gearbox. things we can do ourselves because of John's ability to do welding and turning that nature, you know, things which uh, some of the other guys have to pay garages to do. I reckon to spend uh, something like a hundred pounds a year on, on maintenance but you see this car works every day on the road so there are no additional expenses for racing. I'd spend the money anyway, it's just that I wear it out a bit quicker here. In fact, we've done virtually all, all the work on the car ourselves. You know, building the engines and the gearboxes and the modifications to the suspension and everything, in fact. A lot of hard work, a lot of nagging from the wives because you don't go home. <laughs> all, right, thank you very much. all cars have to...